NVIDIA today released Tensor RT8. This is a very exciting framework that you can make use of whether you're using PyTorch or TensorFlow. This is for inference, primarily. This allows you to query your neural network, get the results out after you've trained it or you use transfer learning to get it from NGC or something similar to that. Now you're ready to infer and you want to infer and score your models as quickly as possible. That's what TensorRT is for. There are two particularly advanced features that are coming in TensorRT 8. First, there's QAT, which is quantization aware training. This allows you to get FP32 accuracy with int8 precision. We'll see more on that possibly in future videos if you're interested in that. And the next feature is sparsity. Sparsity I'm particularly interested in because this allows sort of on the fly pruning, or not really on the fly, but when you take the neural network, transform it into the form that is going to be used to query in TensorRT, it removes connections that are not influencing the output from the neural network all that much. And that's important because in the human brain, every neuron is not connected to every other neuron. Yet in a dense neural network, that is how these things are typically set up. So I'm going to take you through how to set this up. We're gonna do a basic query on a TensorRT enabled neural network, and we're going to run it on a Ampere based A6000 GPU. So to run through this example, I have these notes here that I'm going to put into the description. The get clone here that you will do you have to clone that directory. And I've, I've already cloned it from Git, so I'm not gonna run that again. And you'll change into the TensorRT directory so that you have it, so that you're there. And then you need to get the submodule that this is just the way that NVIDIA set up their Git repository. Once you've got all of that, you need to actually build the Docker image. I'm not going, I also ran that ahead of time off camera because that takes a long, long time and it downloads gigabytes of information. And now we're gonna run this one at the very end. This is actually running the Docker image. So I can paste that into there. We'll do that. And now we're up and running. You can see it here. I'm going to hit it with the Chromium browser that I have installed on my, and there it is. By the way, ignore that. I made a complete Windows user mistake. I did control C to copy, which is, in Unix control C to break. So that's, uh, that's it, we're up and running. So let me go ahead and open now the example. I'm going to run it because we have to download all of BERT. I'm gonna do a bit of this off camera and then we'll jump right back into the demonstration. Okay, now that we've gone through all of the setup to get this actually going, let me show you how we can now download and query BERT. I'm gonna run some of this in real time with you here on the video, but a lot of this I ran off camera, mainly because I have to download BERT, which, which is big. So let me go ahead and scroll down, show you this demo. This demo is included in the Docker image that we just installed, and it's the BERT QAT sparse, and it's located under the BERT notebooks directory inside of the Docker image. If we scroll down, we'll see some of what I ran here. I had to download the squad data set. This is just used, this is, this is basically some sample data that this notebook makes use of that are passages that you then provide it with a question that the neural network needs to answer. We're going to download BERT and this, this part took a while to completely come down. You can see it is 3.6 gigabytes. And there were a couple of other downloads. This, this took probably, probably close, close to an hour. This will depend on your network speed. If you're running in, this, in the cloud, this will be considerably faster. I'm running it on my local computer with an NVIDIA RTX A6000 GPU. And we're also running in Ubuntu. I have not seen instructions on how to run at TensorRT in Windows, but realistically, if you're doing high speed inference, you are going to be running this probably in the cloud and you'll probably want some pre-built 
package to have all of the dependencies created. There's a number of them available in MGC, which is what I've used when I've worked with this same technology in AWS. They also have GCP instructions available as well. These are the additional dependencies that we're installing. So PyTorch related utilities, I am using the PyTorch version of this. And really Tensor RT is agnostic to TensorFlow or to PyTorch. You're essentially taking what PyTorch or what TensorFlow has trained for you or Onyx and converting it into something that can run completely into Tensor RT for inference. So it's really optimized at inference. This took a while. And they've got some neat information here on just sparsity. Sparsity is very important because it lets you take these gigantic neural networks like BERT and trim off some of those connections that are really not going to impact the output of the neural network much. We're printing out the version. So this is the very latest. This is Tensor RT8. And this is just continuing with their training recipe to fine tune BERT to a particular passage that we're interested in. And we'll see that passage in a second. So this is, the, this is the fun part. We are going to take this passage and run it through BERT. We're gonna fine tune BERT on this passage. And then we can pose a question, like what is Tensor RT? Because this passage is from NVIDIA about Tensor RT. Let's go ahead and run this. I have everything in memory from when I previously ran it. Okay, it has gone through. So the question is, what is TensorRT? The answer is a high performance deep learning platform. So you could put your own passage in here and your own question and make use of that. Now what I put in, I put this code in when I was testing it off camera. Can I put my own questions in and just talk to this thing kind of ad hoc? And I was able to do that. So what is included in TensorRT was the question I posed to it. And it goes through all of, its, all of its stuff and parsers to import models and plugins. Yeah, that's important. You have to import these models into TensorRT because TensorRT is not TensorFlow and it's not PyTorch. It's, it's its own thing for it, performing inference on these neural networks. Let's give it just a complete random one. Who created Tensor? RT. Who is the creator? So we'll run that. I have no idea. I'm just trying this one randomly. Answer NVIDIA. So it's able to find that. It's, there is probably information in there that told it that NVIDIA had created. So it's quite, quite correct. Now what I have found with these general purpose BERT, it, it does intend to do yes, no. So if I would say did NVIDIA create Tensor RT, it's going to run that. Answer open source parsers and plugins. So that shows you these amazing packages in deep learning are sort of one trick ponies. They, are, they learn to do a very specific thing. What this example is tuned to do is to go in and pull information from the passage that answers your question. If you ask it something like a yes, no question where the word yes and the word no is not specifically in there, it, it falls short, but that, that's completely expected behavior for BERT. Thank you for watching this video. And if you're interested in more things with TensorRT, let me know. If you're interested in AI and deep learning, please subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.